Hey everyone, Rose here, and I finally sculpted something again. I haven't made any blender sculpts since I did sculpt January, in part because I just really needed a break after that, but also because I've been quite busy over the last few weeks, and sculpting usually takes quite a bit more time and concentration than just painting something. But I've decided to take a bit of time this week to make a nice sculpt again. That's part of the reason why this video is also out a bit late. I'm making this fox character that I've had in my head for quite a while but never really got around to painting or sculpting. So starting out I have a general idea of what he should be like, but I also have a chance to just explore and figure stuff out as I go. Anyway, that's been enough for this intro, off to the time lapse. I started with a sphere for the head and then duplicated over to make the snout. I already go into a decent amount of detail very early on on that. Now I move back to the main part of the head and sculpt in the major shapes like the eye sockets, the brows, and the cheekbones. Then I move on to the ears. I just add another sphere and add a mirror modifier to it and remesh it to add more detail. I also have the mirror modifier set to mirror around the head rather than mirror around the origin of the object. Now for the tufts of fur at the sides. I add in a single vertex, extrude it a couple of times, then I add a subdivision surface modifier, a skin modifier, and another subdivision surface modifier, as well as a mirror modifier to mirror it around the head. Now I can use Ctrl A to control this thickness and move stuff around. This whole setup is quite similar to using curves, but I find it slightly easier to manage. I use it quite a lot throughout the whole model, as you'll probably see as we go. Right now I'm using it to add more tufts to the ears as well as the cheeks. Now I duplicate the neck which I made earlier and make the shoulders. And some more tufts of hair, this time on top of the head and without symmetry. And now back to the face. Now that I have a bunch of fur and stuff around, I'm starting to get a much better idea of how he should look. So I go in adding some more detail and continue to work on making sure all the major shapes are right. I really like where everything's going at this point, so it's time to add in the eyes. They're just a simple sphere with a mirror modifier again. Now that I'm happy with their position, I duplicate them to make the eyelids. And add a solidify modifier to give them some thickness. I apply all the modifiers on the eyelids except for the mirror modifier, and move over into sculpt mode to start sculpting the proper shape of the eyelids. And with that, the face is starting to look more and more like an actual face. Now I make some tweaks here and there to fix up the overall shape of the head and neck and shoulders. At this point I'm not really quite sure what I'm going to do with the rest of the model. I look around for inspiration for a while and eventually decide I want him to have a bunch of thick fluffy fur somehow around his neck. I start by adding a few tufts in front on his chest, but I'm not really sure about how they are and I end up removing them a bit later. So now for attempt number two. I duplicate a bit of the hair from the cheek and start spreading that around facing the back of the neck, kind of flowing to form almost a kind of big spike. It takes me a while to figure out the exact shapes and stuff, but eventually I start getting somewhere where I like it. So now I spend a decent amount of time just pulling and pushing stuff around, tweaking them and changing the thickness and all that, until I'm really happy with how it looks. I'm really glad I didn't try doing this with curves. Like this it's way easier to find the specific point I'm trying to move around and I don't have to comb through a bunch of different vertices where I can't really see what they're connected to, which is an issue I ran into once in a while while making the hair on some of my more recent sculpts. That being said, while it works well for stuff like this, for actual long hair this would probably be a bit of a pain because you don't have the ability to add a profile so you have to sculpt in all the additional details and asymmetries by hand. And now I'm pretty much done with the neck, so I move over to the shirt. I duplicate the neck and shoulders and make the copy into the shirt as well as scaling back the original so that it doesn't stick through. I do some remeshing to try and add in the edge of the shirt, but this really isn't working out so I try it a different way later on. But for now back to the face. I continue to work out all those planes, the cheekbones and the jaw and all that to make sure they all look about right. I also mess around with the eye, 
I originally considered muddling in the colored part, but eventually decided to just color it instead using vertex colors. I also messed around with the jaw a bit, it was looking a bit too thick and bulky, and I wanted it to look a bit slimmer, more like a fox. So I simplified it back down to a very basic shape and went from there, adding back some more detail. And he's really just starting to take shape. I'm really getting the right kind of vibes from his face, so now I add in some eyelashes. I don't go as nearly as long as I do for most of my female characters, but even though he's a guy, he still needs some eyelashes. Guys have eyelashes too. Plus, they make him look especially cute, which is kind of the idea I'm going for with this character. Very cute and friendly and helpful and like curious. Just overall a really nice guy to be around. And now for some posing. I parent a whole bunch of stuff to the head and then carefully rotate it to give him a little bit of a head tilt. It's not super obvious currently, but I'll go back in later and add a bit more. I'm also making some tweaks to the chest. I remove the sculpted in color I had made and add in a plane, and using snapping as well as a solidify modifier and a mirror modifier, I make a proper edge around the top of the shirt. This is one of those many situations where when the original approach didn't work, it's a good idea to still try out a couple of other ways to do something because another one just might work a bit better. And now for some more tweaks around the face. Instead of giving him proper eyebrows, I decided to give him small eyebrow dots. However, I used my same approach of just adding a simple plane with a solidify modifier and a subdivision surface modifier. And now I continue to make small tweaks. I've reached the point where I really have to put all the objects together and remesh them, but that's always scary so I tend to procrastinate by doing a bunch of small tidbits, such as using the trim tool to square off the shirt. But I finally reached a point where I really can't wait any longer, so I grab the snout and eyelids, join them to the head and remesh, and now I can finally spend my time smoothing out all those weird wonky edges that define the basic shape of the model and make it actually look like a soft, friendly face. Because I had taken so much time to make all the major shapes look right, this really didn't take so long, so I can quickly move on to doing some more tweaks here and there on other parts of the model. There's still quite a bit that needs to be done before I can call this a finished model, but I am not sure where I should start and what I should do next. So I spend quite a bit of time just looking around at the model from different angles, trying to decide what to do. I make a couple of tweaks and try a few things out, some of which work and some of which I end up redoing. And some more looking around. I give the nose another go, this time with a bit more attention to detail. And now I go back to that head tilt I was talking about earlier. And now it's finally time to tackle the fur. It's currently way too symmetrical and doesn't quite match up with the tilt, so I apply some of the modifiers and start tweaking it around, adding some more randomness to it. And then back to the face. I wanted to push his expression a bit more, so I added the crease around his cheeks, pushed up his eyes a bit and puffed his cheeks out a bit, all to make him look a bit more wide and smiley. A little bit can go quite a long way with a character like this, and giving them a proper expression can really bring them to life. And now it's once again time to go back to the fur. I grab a couple of the chunks from the front of the model and separate them into their own object. Then I go back to the back and make some tweaks. I take the separated chunks and merge them with the neck so that I can start sculpting them in and making them blend properly. At this point I'm not really sure if I want to merge everything into one solid object or if I can just about manage to kind of mask the transition so it looks like it's all one piece but it actually isn't. You can see that here in the face, I'm adding some tufts of hair around the edge that just about covers where the face stops and the tufts start. I eventually decide against this though, it just didn't really work and you can still quite clearly see the creases between two separate pieces. At this point, really all the base ideas and base parts are in, it's just about me going and applying modifiers and tweaking adding some more creases and detail and stuff like that, and it's just the same process repeated over and over again on different parts of the model. 
for this process I almost only use my crease brush and the smooth brush to add in small creases and smooth out hard edges and all that fun stuff. Once I'm happy with the amount of detail on a specific part, I grab two pieces, join them together with Ctrl J and then remesh them. You can use Shift R to preview the detail level of your remesh and then Ctrl R to remesh. And that way I can continue adding uh, details and everything, making sure everything fits together. I quite enjoy uh, sculpting in the little texture parts kind of in here. I don't go with uh, multiple like hundreds of little strands of hair, but instead I use kind of some sharp edges and softer creases and stuff like that to give the impression of large chunks of hair without actually having to go in and sculpt a whole bunch of stuff. And that whole process makes it really easy to make a bunch of like spiky hair like that in a relatively short amount of time. The whole process only took a bit over 5 hours. The time lapse is sped up to 20 times just because that seems like a reasonable video length uh, without being too fast. But it turns out I could totally have just made a sculpt like this on one of the other days instead of waiting so long to make another sculpt. But I guess it always just kind of feels like sculpts take longer even when they actually don't. I guess the whole process is just kind of a bit more tedious. It's hard to retroactively go in and add some details that weren't there in the beginning. You have to kind of have a lot of stuff set relatively early on. I also have to make sure the software is working probably. As most of you guys probably know, Blender's scope mode is currently in a lot of development, so I'm actually using the scope mode branch specifically in order to scope because there are a couple of interesting features that I really enjoy. The downside of that, obviously, is that it isn't necessarily super stable, and I actually ran into a couple of minor issues and like bugs. Not really crashes, but like inconvenient bugs especially later on while I was painting and rendering that it took a while to figure out to work around for. And now back to talking about the process. I've reached the point where I'm happy with how all the inv individual parts look, so I merge everything into one object using Ctrl J and remesh. I remesh to a really high level of detail because I obviously have already added a bunch of detail into different parts of the model and I don't want to lose that. And that worked out pretty well. All my details are where I want them to be, so I just go in with a smooth brush to make sure any weird artifacts from remeshing are gone. And now it's painting time. As I mentioned earlier, I'm using the scope mode development branch, meaning I have access to the scope mode the vertex paints which I use to paint the model. It's very practical because they're way faster than the regular vertex paints and they don't require me to re-apologize or unwrap anything. I start out by painting everything with a base orangish color and then add a slightly darker shade for the darker tufts of hair around the back of his neck and the top of his head. Then I go in with a beige and paint in the fluffy fur around his cheeks, the bottom of his jaw and the front of his neck. I also paint the back of his ears darker, which is what foxes have, and paint the insides lighter later too. For this part of the process especially, but even early on, it's very good to have references open of actual foxes as well as some other artist drawings of characters like this to get a good idea of how you want to make the colors look and stuff. For the most part, we really don't know how stuff looks. Uh, off the top of our heads, even if it's something we were very familiar with, so just having some pictures of them out while painting or sculpting them really makes it easier to figure out how they should look, and the finished result usually looks a lot better. Now obviously he looks very different from a real fox, and he's my character, so it, there isn't any art of him yet, so I still have to make some decisions for myself, such as do I want the edge to the white to be a smooth gradient or do I want it to be a sharp edge? I also have to add the color to the more finicky parts such as where there are like small tight creases and stuff and it's easy to paint on the wrong side of the model. But eventually I get all the color where it should be and get everything properly cleaned up. I also add some darker shades around his eyes and also finally get around to painting the eyes their proper color. 
I had originally painted them grey, just kind of as a placeholder so I can see where he's looking, but now I paint them in blue, first adding just a base coat, then adding some darker shades, and finally some gradients and highlights for details. I also add in that marking that foxes have at the side of their snout. I make it a bit stylized so it doesn't really look exactly how real foxes have it, but that doesn't matter, it's a stylized character. And now I also paint his nose. It took me a while to get the color quite right, but eventually I got something I liked. And now to his eyes. Foxes have quite dark circles almost around their eyes, and I tried to implement something like that for him, but putting it on the bottom looked slightly weird, so I kept it to the top and to the corner of his eye. I also painted in the line for the mouth, uh, to make that a bit darker and more visible. And then I carefully use my grab brush to add a little bit of asymmetry to his expression. And now I add some little details to his eyes. I model some tiny little crosses because I want him to be a kind of medic character, and I put those in his eyes as highlights. I always like having little highlights, fake highlights, that kind of reflect something about the character's personality. You'll see that in some of my older sculpts, and I did that here too. Then I painted his shirt, I went with a dark navy that kind of matches his eyes but doesn't call attention away from them. And I go back to the fur and add some very slight highlights just to add a little bit more depth. I do that a bit more in some of my other sculpts, but I didn't really feel like putting that much time into these ones. I add a little bit more detail to the shirt, adding some highlights and a little bit of a gradient-y kind of shadow deal around the bottom. And with that, the painting is done and I move on to some quick lighting and rendering. I already have my lighting setup saved in my startup file, which is just a backlight and a key light and a basic plane for the backdrop. So I can quickly add my vertex colors to a material, tweak the colors of the lights and stuff a bit change around some settings to make everything work right, and with that, he is already done. And here he is. And I'm really, really happy with how he turned out. It's been a while since I've sculpted a furry character, and the last few times I always struggled with making tufts of fur and stuff like that look right. And for this one, I think I really got it to look the way I wanted it to and the way I imagined it in my head. So I'm really, really happy with it. It's also really nice to get back to sculpting. It's really been a while and I've quite missed it. It's a very different kind of process to painting. And it's very enjoyable to kind of watch a three-dimensional kind of character or creature slowly come into existence. I really want to make a full rig character that I can animate at some point in the future, but I'm quite busy at the moment so it's probably still going to be a while until I can start with that. So for now I'll just stick to simple busts and stuff like that. Anyway, that's all from me for this video. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like and subscribe and all that, and maybe check out one of my other videos to the right. If you'd like to see more of my art or maybe get a commission from me, I've put links to all that in the description below. And I've also put a link to the Discord server. Anyway, I hope you have a nice day and see you all next time.